Hey everybody, today we're going to work on replacing the motor mounts on an O2 WRX. The motor mounts I have pictured here are the Group N motor mounts. I'll put all of the part numbers needed in the description below for the bolts, nuts, washers, and any other accessories, especially the motor mounts or part numbers for the motor mounts as well. We're going to walk through this and see if we can change these without having to disconnect all kinds of things up here and get them out of our way. Um, obviously the first things first, you need to get the car up on either jack stands or car ramps, whatever is going to give you more access. You're going to need a very reliable jack that won't let down on you while you're working because you're going to be under pinch points while working on this. And I'll throw, a I'll throw in the description as well some of the tools that we're using. So we'll, we'll get at this. So because I don't have a cherry picker, I'm going to use my jack and some blocks of wood against the oil pan. Just remember when you do this, don't put the jack directly on the oil pan. You want to use some wood, some 2x4s, a couple of them. So I'm going to apply pressure to the bottom of the oil pan enough and then I'm going to take the two bottom nuts off each side of the motor mount. So the first nut we're going to remove is the passenger side cross member. It's located right there. It's 14 millimeters. If you've never taken these off before, I highly recommend spraying these down with like PB Blaster or something so you can get them off. I'm going to use an impact on this one. There's a washer on there as well. The driver's side nut. The cross member is located right there. Hard to miss it, it's 14 millimeters again. So after we have the nuts off the motor mounts, we're gonna need to start jacking the motor up. Uh, you might want definitely need to check for any clearance issues because I run the larger STI intercooler and the SBT strut brace. They are going to hit, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the strut brace off. So just to make sure I wasn't causing any unneeded tension on anything. I remove the top of the air box and the coupler hose there. I remove the obviously the little snorkel here. I remove the mounts for the radiator. Took the strut bar off. I'm still clear back here even with the SDI intercooler. The pitch mount is still connected and we have the engine jacked up about as high as it will go so we're going to see if we can get these mounts out now. The forward mounting bolt. It's right next to the oil pan right there. It is 14 millimeters. Use the impact to get this out. This should come out because it's steel and aluminum so there shouldn't be a lot of rust in there but we'll hopefully it'll be right. The front one's out. So on the passenger side, this these are tri these rear bolts are tricky. This is right there is the bolt. You're gonna need an open end wrench to get to it, and it's tight, so you end up might you might need a cheater bar on the end of there, because there's not a lot of room to work in here. Let's see what we can get done. So if you don't have a cheater bar big enough, or a piece of pipe to wrap around your box and wrench. I have this gear wrench that's a quarter of an inch to half inch shorter than typical ratchets. So I got that on there and still wouldn't budge by hand so I got my orange mallet and tapped it a couple times hard enough this way to where now that it's loose. So it's just a matter now of sitting here and slowly taking this out. Once you get it loose enough, with your, with you start moving with your fingers, you can move your arm over the CV shaft and you can get to it. I'm able to use my thumb and index finger to unthread this bolt.
It's not very long, so there's not a whole lot of... We'll be here all day. Just take some patience. And I got it out. So we have the passenger side motor mount out. I found it easier to twist and turn the motor mount and bring it to the front of the engine. Uh, a lesson learned halfway through is use blocks of wood that aren't too much bigger than your oil pan. Otherwise the motor mount will hit the wood and you really can't get it out. So you have to do even more twisting and turning. So we have the passenger side motor mount out. So here's our stock motor mount marked R for passenger side. This is the front, this is the back. This has got 167,000 miles on it. There's some, I see a little tearing there. I mean, it's still solid for the most part. The shield doesn't fit on the replacement one, and anything online I found didn't really talk about it, so I assume it's specific to these motor mounts, so it's not going to get reused on the new one. Here's our new right hand side motor mount. So these plate nuts are 30 foot pounds. You might need a vise to put this in because it's a you know a motor mount, so it's gonna twist and torque when we try to uh, tighten it down, but it's getting 30 foot pounds are good and tight. I mean they're not gonna go anywhere. It's not really ready to put this back in. You'll know when you put these top plates on it, they the one Holes elongated to give you some adjustment. We're going to try to make sure that the mount is parallel with the plate so we get good positioning on the holes and we'll see if that helps. So I, uh, I dropped the, the engine and got some shorter pieces of wood and it's a lot easier to work in here. I basically have fitted the passenger side mount up against the engine and I'm, I've got the front bolt in threaded by hand and make sure we don't cross thread this. We'll tighten it just to get it enough tight enough so we can get the back bolt in which will probably be tricky. You also want to note that the edge that comes out goes towards the oil pan as you can see. It won't go in the other way. <laughs> so we'll work on the back now. Kind of hard to see, but I've got the bolt started. What really helped me is I've got the engine high enough that I can fit my left hand between the brace and the engine. Again, be extremely careful that you trust your jack. I'm not responsible if you crush your arm. But I brought my hand enough up under here that I could grab the bottom of the bolt. And then I held it, and then I brought my other right hand around the CV shaft and under, and very carefully threaded that in there enough couple threads that it's stuck and now I've got my ratcheting box and wrench and again go slow and make sure it feels good so you definitely do not want to cross thread this guy that would be a bad day and because there's probably no way to get a torque wrench in here this is just going to have to be good and tight 30 foot pounds isn't a whole lot so you should be able to refine this back one enough that it's going to be tight Now your front one, you should be definitely be able to get a torque wrench on that, and it's 30 foot-pounds. So I'll torque the front one down. I misspoke moments ago. The torque is like 25 foot-pounds. 25 or 30, I mean, that's close enough. So I'll just get these torque down. And the back one will just have to be as tight as you can get it, because there's no way to get a torque wrench in there. So now we can move on to the driver's side. So we're on to the driver's side now. I'm going to start with the rear. The steering column is kind of in the way here. But I discovered I've got a longer 3 8 ratchet here with fourteen standard 14 millimeter socket. If you go to the front side, you can get your ratchet up over here in this corner here. And it looks like you should be able to get enough that you can 
if I can get this thing to click. Yeah, here we go. So you should be able to get it started and loosened from this end. And we'll get a shorter one here and we'll continue on our way. Now I should be able to get my box end wrench in here. Yeah, now I'm using my box end wrench. Again, you can slip your hand up here to keep the wrench on there. Just be very careful. It's just. So I got the back side out, and the front should be easy like the other front. Okay, start. Again, the front bolt is right here next to the oil pan. So make sure your plate's marked L, and this end goes in. Again, with this jutted out end goes towards the oil pan. This one seemed to come out a lot easier without monkeying with it, and it does this sit right in there a lot easier than the passenger side so now we'll work on getting our bolts lined up here so I got the front bolt started threaded most of the way in there and then the back side I basically took my right arm over the CV shaft again and got it lined up close and started threading, in, threading it in by hand. I definitely think the driver's side is the easier side to work with. I mean, this thing just fell out when we got it taken out. And then it went back in like butter. So we'll get around to getting these tightened up. Again, with the driver's side, you should be able to easily get a torque wrench in the front to torque that front bolt down. The back one, again, will be good and tight. Now the fun part is lowering the engine once you've gotten both new motor mounts on and getting the stud in this hole here. You might want to have a helper slightly lower the engine to make sure it's going to go back in place. So when you're lowering this to get it into position, it's easier to get one side, lower it and get it in, tighten the nut on it, and then come back and lift and do the other side. But you can take a small pry bar if you're, you're off, and you can pull against the motor mount here and get the stud to come back into the slot here. Remember, you don't want it to drop on and push the threads down because then your motor mount's junk. But if you go like this and have your friend slowly lower the engine, you'll be able to get this to slide right back in here. And we're pretty much in line with where our original washer and nut was, so we're pretty good there. So we'll get this button back up. So the torque on these guys is 62 and some chains, so I'll just conveniently round up to 63 foot-pounds. So after you get your nuts tightened down on your motor mount studs, you can go ahead and start reassembling anything that you took off. Like I said, I didn't take the pitch mount off, and anything else I took off up top was just for clearance. The strut bar was the only thing that was a major thing that was in the way. The uh, lessons learned, again, is to use smaller pieces of wood that are no wider than your oil pan so you can maneuver the motor mounts and I don't know if these bolts or these nuts if these are just some defective ones, defective ones. but these are the uh, these are the correct part number listed for the cross member to engine mount stud the torque specifications everywhere I found online said 62 point whatever foot pounds and I started off and they wouldn't they didn't seem like they're getting tight. Had double checked this torque specs and I tightened it a little more and I felt it give way. So I took was I able to get it off and luckily I didn't strip the uh, stud out on the engine mount because you have to buy a whole new one. But I pulled the threads right out of this out of this nut. So I ended up actually reusing the stock nuts. 
I started at 30 foot pounds and they instantly hit 30 and I just slowly you know work my way up to 63 but I don't know what's up with these nuts but if you do this and you buy these if you don't reuse yours just be careful when you start torquing them down that you don't if they feel like they're not getting tight then I would just pull them off and chuck them in the trash but other than that we had about two hours of actual work into doing this and this was a lot less work in my opinion than changing the steering rack bushings you just got to have a couple extra you know the, the box and wrench or the ratcheting box and wrench definitely helps here and a helper yep So I've driven the car for approximately about three days with the new Group N motor mounts on there and overall I'm very impressed. Cost wise the Group N's are actually cheaper at least from all the online sources I've checked by at least $40 over the stock ones. And most of the stock listings don't give you the plates. As far as noise, vibration and harshness I didn't really notice too much of a difference because I already have like the Perrin pitch mount and the Group N transmission mount and white line transmission bushings. I did notice that the engine seems a little more responsive after shifts. I noticed that the shifter actually firmed up a little bit when you're rowing between the gears. It doesn't feel squishy. Um, from the video clip that you just saw, I kind of did a comparison with the stock revving up in park versus the Group N's. And the stock ones, you could see the engine tweak a little bit, and you could watch the washer fluid move up and down. We did notice that the driver's side mount, I'll have to get a picture, I got a better picture, but it's starting to tear along the outside here, so maybe that's why it had a little bounce to it. But overall, I'm really impressed. I don't have any footage of inside the car because it's really kind of hard to hear that, that difference and that increase. But like I said, everything feels a lot firmer. Even starting and stopping the car, the engine just feels a lot more solid. I did notice a little more rumble vibration from the exhaust. I have a catless up pipe, a single catted down pipe, and a full 3 inch cat back. I have the, I think they're the Perrin hard rubber polymer exhaust hangers on there to help with that but other than that definitely for the price you can't beat these especially after replace them thanks again everybody for watching